This tutorial is going to talk about how a wave plate influences the polarization state of a beam of light, the wave plate influence upon the Jones vector. So our setup situation is we have some input state EX, EY, it's a little arrow here just indicating some instantaneous orientation of the electric field coming in. It might be spiraling around like this, like some elliptical state. It might be oscillating back and forth like this as it propagates along, in which case it would be a linear state. So it, in, it enters this wave plate. And what's the influence of the wave plate? We can, uh, again, as we keep track of things like this, we'd say that the input state, we've got this EX, EY coming in. And then for output, we've got this wave plate acting on it, WP for wave plate. And in general, what's going to happen is that each component, the X and Y components, are going to pick up some phase. The passage of the X component through this plate is going to pick up some phase. So that's going to become EX e to the i phi x and a similar behavior on the y term now I want to make sure to emphasize here that we're not talking about the total optical path through this wave plate corresponding to phi x and phi y it's just a relative statement saying that where whatever the phase difference is between the x and y components on the way in, these may be complex numbers, that phase difference, those would be the same two complex numbers, the total phase difference changes because phi x and phi y may not be the same. This plate is birefringent. The refractive index isn't the same felt by the x oscillation and the y oscillation. So they gather different amounts of optical phase as they pass through the plate. And it's that relative difference, which is what we care about when we're talking about wave plate influences. Almost always in any optic situation, certainly true in optics 262, as far as I can remember, always. So what's the influence of the wave plate here? Well, the X component in is affected by an X term, and the Y component in it's affected by this Y term. There's no crosstalk. The amount of Y in the beam doesn't, in the input beam, doesn't influence how much X there is at the end. And the amount of X in the input beam doesn't influence how much Y there is in the end. That's different from a polarizer. If you angle a polarizer, the X and Y components in the input state will influence uh, the amount of light that's present in both components at the end. But not true with the wave plate. It doesn't absorb any light or, or extinguish. It only changes the phase. So the wave plate, the, the uh, wave plate's effect can't be written as a projection sort of thing that we had with the polarizers. The wave plate element, apparently, it looks like a diagonal element, like a diagonal matrix where the off diagonal terms are zero. And then the, uh, the diagonal terms are e to the i phi x and e to the i phi y. Notice that these two terms have unit amplitude. So um, again, we're not attenuating any of the light. We're just phase shifting differently the x and y components of the beam. Now we almost never leave the state in this form because as I said, all we really care about is the relative phase between phi x and phi y. Usually the thickness of this, the overall thickness of this plate is irrelevant and it's just the difference in the phase that we care about. And we can factor out a factor of e to the i phi x. And then this matrix becomes 1, 0, 0. And then e to the i. Then it's a delta phase. right? It's phi y minus phi x, which is to say the difference in phase accumulated along the x and y paths. Usually, this term here, we will ignore. The, this is what we would call the global phase. We don't care whether this wave plate uh, imparts 22 cycles or wavelengths worth of phase to both components. 
in addition to the small amount difference. That global phase, so the thickness, if you will, of the overall plate is not important. What matters to us is the relative phase, the delta phase here. And some examples of wave plates would be, if we have some specific ones that are very important, we have what's called a half wave plate. Half wave plate. That's the case where there's a pi phase, where the delta phase is pi. This term here is pi. So in that case, the wave plate can be written as 1, 0, 0, e to the i pi, which is minus 1. So it flips the sign of the y component relative to the x component. e x e y in, e x negative e y out. We also have a quarter wave plate. That's an important one too. Here, the delta phase is pi over 2. The y component is delayed relative to the x component by a fact by pi over 2. And that gives us a final state of a final matrix for the wave plate of 1, 0, 0, and then e to the i pi over 2. When you work that out, that becomes i. So now we have e x e y in, e x i e y out. It changes the phase of the y term by a factor of 90 degrees. And I sometimes like to just remember this as 1, 0, 0, e to the i pi over 2. In some ways, this makes it easier for me to remember that what this is is a phase shift and not multiplication by i. Same thing with the minus 1. It's in some ways actually easier to remember that as 1, 0, 0, e to the i pi. Now, in the case of the polarizer, we considered taking a polarizer and rotating it through an angle theta and looking at what its influence was then. And in the previous tutorial on, on polarizers, that was pretty straightforward to do. It's a little less straightforward to think about what the wave plate is going to do to the state. And let's consider that now. So I'm going to have to erase some of this screen, and I'll now do that. We're back to considering a wave plate that gets rotated through an angle theta. Let's look at that wave plate head on from over here. Some front views. The wave plate starts off with its x and y principal axes this way, and I've drawn a little arrow along the x axis just for reference once I rotate. So this diagram indicates where the wave plate used to be, and this arrow here indicates the electric field orientation of a 1-0 state as measured in the laboratory coordinate system with which this x-y axes are aligned. If I rotate the wave plate, I've drawn that in yellow, that state here, that 1-0 state, is seen as what's it going to look like to the rotated wave plate. I've drawn that here in yellow and called it the x prime, y prime coordinate system. That one zero state, you can see it has a positive projection onto the x prime axis. And if we keep track of the trigonometry, it turns out to be cosine theta of the, ro the rotation theta. Cos theta is the x component of this white vector. The y com projection of this rotated in this rotated coordinate system, you can see is going negative, And it's proportional to the sine of theta. This turns out to be what it is. So a 1, 0 state as seen as, is seen as cos theta, negative sine theta. And I often use this little picture as a sanity check to help me figure out what the rotation matrix elements are. A similar thing that I could do would be to draw the y component like this, a 0, 1 state. And if you go through that exercise, you can say, OK, if I started with a 0, 1 state, what's it seen as? Well, it's got a positive x prime projection, 
but it's not going as cos theta. If theta is small, it's going as this, a small. It's a pretty small projection, and that's positive sine of theta. And its y prime component is positive and large for a small rotation, so that's going to be positive cos theta. And now we can just write this out in general. Of course, there's a general thing. And the general case here, if I start off with some state EX, EY as my input, and I rotate it, the general rotation turns out to be this matrix cos theta sine theta, negative sine theta, cos theta. This is what I would refer to as the rotation effect of rotating anything, but in this case the wave plate, through an angle theta. You have an input state EX, EY in the lab frame. But now if we ask ourselves what the wave plate sees, the wave plate sees a state given by this math. And if we do it out, it's going to be at two elements, just like the input state is a two element vector. This has to be a two element vector. I've written it pretty widely, but that's because I'm going to have to write some terms here. The, ec the top term is going to be EX times cos theta plus EY times sine theta. And the bottom term is negative EX sine theta plus EY cos theta. So when you're really grinding things out, you have to actually think about it this way. But in general, I don't want you to th obsess too much about this expression. I want you to spend time on this side and say, if I can remember this rotation matrix, then I know that a state in the lab gets multiplied by R of theta in order to figure out what the wave plate sees. If, for example, this were a half wave plate, then the entire process of the wave plate influencing the Jones vector would go as follows. The input would be some arbitrary state EX, EY. You would then multiply it by a rotation matrix corresponding to the angle positive theta that now creates a state that the wave plate sees. You would then multiply it by the wave plate's own matrix at an angle of zero degrees. This, for example, for a half wave plate would be the matrix 1, 0, 0, minus 1. I'll write EG there for that's a half wave plate. Then, now you've got the output state as seen in the wave plate's rotated frame. You've now got to rotate, the, you've now got to ask what is seen in the lab frame. So we have to multiply by a negative theta rotation to figure out what the electric fields will be back in the lab frame. And that then gives us the output state, which We'll just, we don't have a particular name for that. It's EX uh, out and EY out. And the last thing to emphasize is that these three terms together can be thought of as the, the matrix of a wave plate rotated through an angle theta. And that's 
the real engineering thing there. If you take a wave plate whose matrix you know in the lab frame and you rotate it through an angle, it's no longer slowing down a y component relative to an x, it's slowing down a y prime component relative to an x prime component. What is its influence upon a lab frame state ex, ey? Well, its influence has to by, be this thing in red, just that's what the variable means. What is the, way, what is the matrix corresponding to a rotated wave plate through angle theta? Now you've unpacked it. What, it is equal to the product of these three matrices, a rotation matrix, the wave plate in the lab frame, and then a rotation matrix to get the electric field back into the lab frame. And we'll be doing examples of that. This is the underlying theory of it.